uh, uh, not Diego Isiardo, but his collaborator. So what is it? So Giancarlo uh, Lucchini Arteke is going to talk about local global principle for homogeneous species over some two-dimensional geometric global fields. Okay. Thank you very much, Philippe, uh, much, Philippe for the introduction and for the invitation to this seminar. Really glad to be talking here. So uh, yeah, this is a uh, joint work with Diego Izquierdo, as, as Philippe told you. Uh, it's, it's quite recent, actually. It has only been two weeks on the archive. So if you have any questions, you can ask me later or uh, just go and see the article itself. Um, by the way, before I start, I would really like to apologize about my handwriting and working on that. On the blackboard, it's much better. But uh, yeah, and with these new technologies, I'm just getting used to it. So um, anyway, let me start with the uh, classical settings uh, as, as an introduction. So the classical situation, just for historical reason, this would be a number fields. So I'm going to talk about other fields, but it's good to know what's been done before. So, oh, oh that's terrible. There. Anyway, so let us fix some notation. K would be a number field. Uh, and uh, omega will be the set of places of K. And of course, if I get some place in omega, I can always fix KV, the completion that corresponds to it. So X will always be a K variety and uh, pretty soon it will be a very nice one. It will be a homogeneous space, but for now you can just assume it's any nice smooth variety. And uh, I'm going to note by uh, X of AK, the set of adelic points. So if you're not used to adelic points, uh, you can just take a projective variety and then this will just be the product of uh, the points on every completion for V in omega. So uh, let me just recall what the local global principle is. So a local global principle in this setting, we're talking about rational points. So I'm just going to abbreviate this by LGP. It's just the following implication. If I have a dialect points, so if this set is non-empty, that is if I have points on every completion of my field K, then I must have a rational point on the variety, okay? Uh, this was proved by Minkowski in the case of uh, K equals Q for quadrants and then generalized by Hasse in his thesis uh, in 1920s uh, for quadrants over any number field. But of course, there are lots of counterexamples that came afterwards. And in the 70s, uh, Manin introduced the, a certain abstraction. So nowadays, you know, you can explain uh, counterexamples, so failures of um, the local global principle. So varieties that have points everywhere locally, but do not have a rational point uh, by means of uh, the Brouwer Manning abstraction. So it's called the Brouwer Manning abstraction because it was introduced by Manning in the seventies, but uh, it uses the Brouwer group. So let me explain a little bit how this goes. So let us start by recalling that the Brouwer group of X here is the et al, second et al cohomology group of the variety X with values in the multiplicative group. So it's the cohomological Brouwer group. Of course, when the variety is nice, it, it coincides with the Azumaya Brouwer group, you know what that is. And uh, with this, you can define the so-called Brouwer pairing, which is just a very natural pairing. It's just functionality of et al cohomology. Just take any L point here, L would be any K algebra, for instance, a field over K. And you take a, a class in Brouwer X. So you take a point and you take a class alpha and you're going to fall where? Well, just in Brouwer L. And this is just evaluation. So it's just P star of alpha. Sometimes it's denoted by alpha evaluated at P in this way, but essentially P is just a morphism from spec L to your variety X. So you're just pulling back that class using the functionality of et al cohomology and you're following in the H2 of L with values in GN. So that's just the Brouwer group of L. That's the Brouwer pairing, but now you wanna use it in this uh, local global context. So uh, if you fix a certain alpha in Brouwer X, you can do the following. Well, uh, you can consider, uh, first of all, rational points. You can evaluate them at alpha and you're going to follow in the Brouwer K by means of this power pairing, of course. You can also consider adelic points. 
and you can evaluate them at alpha. So this is just a product of KV points. So you're going to fall in power of KV. A priori, you found the product, but you, since you're taking a daily point, it's a technical point, but just believe me, um, you fall in the direct sum of the power of KVs. And now recall that rational points can be embedded diagonally in a daily points. So here you have a natural arrow as well. So it's just a diagonal uh, map and these square commutes. And now you see this arrow below. And if you ever had a course in classical theory, this sounds, this, this looks like it's well known, right? So you got your local class field theory that tells you that Brouwer of KV is just isomorphic to Q mod Z and there is a direct sum, sum. So you'll take the sum of all these invariants given by class field theory. You can fall in Q mod Z, you know that it's surjective and actually you know that this is a complex and moreover, this arrow right here is injective. So essentially you can understand the Brouwer group of K by just looking at its local images. That's the whole point this is sort of a, summary of global class field theory and local class field theory at the same time. This is known as the so-called Brouwer, Hasse, Noether exact sequence. So this will be really important afterwards. So you get this exact sequence and what Manning did was the following: just you get an angelic point here. Okay. So you can push it there and push it there and justify this arrow as a composition. And this is the Brouwer-Manning pairing of alpha taking values in some angelic and the upshot of this diagram is that if you look at rational points embedded in here, then because the, the, the lower uh, row is exact, you will always get zero on Q mod Z. So it may happen that you have adelic points, but the ones that do not give zero here are far away in some sense from rational points. So you don't care about them. So what happens is that you can define the so-called brouwer manning set. So let me just define this. It's the set of uh, adelic points uh, such that, well, they give zero uh, with respect to every alpha in a B. And of course, B will be here any subset of the Brouwer group. You can just take the whole Brouwer group if you prefer. So this is the so called uh, Brouwer Manning uh, set, right? Uh, with respect with respect to um, some subset B of Brouwer X. Okay, so as I told you, what you do realize with this is that K points are actually contained in this uh, Brouwer Manning set for any B. So uh, the conclusion in the end is that uh, if uh, by any chance you got local points everywhere, but somehow they are all non-orthogonal to some class. So if the set of orthogonal classes is uh, empty, well, you get a failure of the local global principle. And this is the whole point of the Brouwer Manning abstraction. You can explain most counterexamples in this way. I mean, until the 70s, it actually explained every counterexample known at that time. Of course, nowadays we know ever since the 2000, uh, by Skor Bogatov came up with the first counterexample that was not explained by this, but that's a whole other story. Right now, I really want to concentrate on a certain subset of varieties that are homogeneous spaces where this seems to work. So let us, let us uh, fix now G a connected linear K group. Let us talk a little bit about homogeneous spaces. So X will be a homogeneous space of G, of course. So this is just a variety with a G action. I think in this seminar, I don't have to explain the definition. So uh, there's this conjecture by uh, Coliotelen. I'm not gonna state it in its full generality. I just want to say what it implies in this context. So if you got a homogeneous space of a connected linear group, when then the Brouwer Manning abstraction should be the only abstraction, in the sense that if the Brouwer Manning set with respect to the whole Brouwer group is not empty, if you get a delete points orthogonal to the Brouwer group, then you do, you should at least get a rational point. So the conjecture is actually for rationally connected varieties, but homogeneous spaces are always rationally connected, so we're good. 
And here there's lots of stuff that are known. So let me do a brief summary of the main milestones. Of course, I'm making choices here. So I'm not telling the whole story. I apologize for that if anyone feels like there's a point missing. So this is my personal choice. Uh, the first very important step is if X is a principal homogeneous space. Homogeneous space. Then the conjecture is okay. So it's proved this is a result by uh, Sansuk in 81, published in Krell's journal. So we'll recall that a principal homogeneous space is just a homogeneous space such that the geometric sublicers are trivial. So it's just as a variety, it's just a K form of the, the G itself. Uh, then, okay, so no stabilizers, good. What about stabilizers now, non-trivial ones? Let us start with the nice ones. Let us start with connected ones. Well then, this is okay. Can I make a comment? Sure. Yeah, so um, the conjecture was uh, for smooth projective varieties. And what Sansuk oh. proved was also for smooth projective variety. So the assumption which you're making X of AK bro X is not empty is actually different from saying the same thing for the compactification of X. Yeah, so you're totally right. I, I, was, I was hiding that detail, but of course That's this okay. is equivalent for, to having a smooth compactification, uh, having uh, satisfying this hypothesis, yeah. For homogeneous spaces, this is true. Of course, this, that's why I didn't want to enter into technical details. For homogeneous spaces, this assumption I'm making right here, yeah, it's equivalent to the original one that is uh, compactifying the variety and then uses using the Brouwer group of the compactification itself, okay? So yeah, sure, thank you very much anyway for the, for the correction. In this case, still a number field here? Yeah, yeah, we're still in number fields. We're still in number fields. I'm just telling the, the what is known for number fields. I'll, I'll get to the new fields right away. So uh, the second step, as I was saying, is uh, yeah, what about connected stabilizers? Well, then it's okay as well. Connected, connected stabilizers. So this is a result by uh, Borovoy in 96, also published in Krell's journal. So uh, by the way, I should, uh, moreover, I should do a parenthesis here. Uh, in uh, one and two, you can actually uh, you can use so-called uh, locally uh, constant classes. So you don't need the whole Brouwer group. So let me try to explain what I mean by that, and I'll just give the precise definition. Um, so let me define this Cyrillic B of X as uh, well the set of uh, classes in the Brouwer group. Uh, such that, well, when you take alpha V, and I, I hope you'll, you immediately understand what alpha V means, but otherwise, let me just try to say it. Uh, so it's an element in Brouwer of X V. X V, of course, is the base change of X to uh, the local field K V. So just push it over there. You get your alpha V here, and you want it to be in the image of this natural morphism. This is just a morphism defined by the structural morphism. If you consider a talcomology again. Uh, so this will be, give you classes that are actually constant upon evaluation over all the, the variety. So uh, that's why we call them locally constant. And of course you want this for every V in Omega, okay? And in order to actually give the correct definition of this, I must actually mod out here, uh, sorry, the Brouwer group of K. Because let me go back for a second. If you look at this diagram here, uh, well, you see that classes in Brouwer X that come from Brouwer K do not give you anything at all. They will always give zero with any point. So you can actually find this Brouwer Manning obstruction with respect not just to subsets of Brouwer X, but to sub quotients in the sense that you can always mod out constant classes. So uh, this uh, Cyrillic B here, it's already modding out Brouwer K. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you can just ignore that quotient. It's not really, really important. It's just technical stuff. Okay, so um, continuing with the story. Now, what about non-connected stabilizers? Well, there's, um, there's a result that we uh, came up with, uh, Cyril Demarche, in 2019, that says the following. It suffices to prove the conjecture, so it's a reduction result, uh, for G equals SLN, so it's a very nice linear connected group, and X uh, with finite stabilizers. 
So the point is, if you have your, if you have a homogeneous phase G with um, a non-connected sublicer, you can always build up a new homogeneous space of SLN with finite sublicers, with which you can answer the question right there, and you'll get the answer to the question for the other homogeneous space. Uh, so as I, as I was saying, this was Dimash and myself, 2019. And then came up this huge, enormous result by um, Harpas and Wittenberg that attacked the question for SLN and finite sublicers. But of course, they didn't give the full answer. That would be really strong. But this is already really strong. This is OK if you, get, if you take SLN and finite hypersolvable stabilizers. Actually, this, they also solved in its full generality for homogeneous spaces the equivalent conjecture for zero cycles. So there, you can actually take any finite group and then with finite groups reduced to everything by using more or less the same result we proved with the match right here. So there's a lot of stuff that has been done on uh, number fields. And of course, there are stuff that needs to be done. Still, we do believe that solvable stabilizers should be within reach nowadays, but that's a whole other story. So let's change the subject and let's go to the second part. Let's talk a bit about this geometric global fields. This is just, uh, I came up with the term just like that. If you don't like it, we can change it because I really don't know how to name these fields, but it's just fields that want to be global fields. They look like global fields, but they come from a more geometric setting somehow. So uh, there's has been lately a lot of interest in these new fields and there are lots of them. Uh, so here I wanna cite some people. Of course, I must start with the two ones that have already given a talk in this seminar that are Parimala and Daniel Krashen, but there's a whole bunch of people being that have been working on this for a good while already. So let me cite, I don't know. Um, yeah, there's uh, Harbader, Hartman, there's Kogotlen, there's Parimala. Yeah, I already said it, Suresh, Harari, uh, Scheider, um, Shamoli, Izquierdo. I'm certainly missing a lot of them, so I'm sorry. But uh, so here I want to just show you one particular field maybe a second one afterwards. And uh, we'll try to work on those, okay? There's a whole bunch of other types of fields of this type. So now small k will be uh, C double parenthesis T, so this, uh, the field of Laurent series. And we're going to take a curve, so C over k, a projective, smooth, very nice, uh, geometrically, geometrically connected uh, curve, okay? over k and big k. So it was a number field, now it's not. Now it will be the function field of this curve. So this is a natural analogy with global fields in positive characteristic. I'm just changing the finite field for a quasi-finite field. So this guy right here has the exact same um, absolute gallery, C hat. So it has one cyclic station for each n. It really has some similar properties to finite fields. So you would expect to have the same local global behavior that you get for global fields in positive characteristic. So, um, so yeah, so far so good. I mean, it looks the same, but difference start to appear. So the first thing you must know is that there are two types of valuations uh, in K. So um, what are these? So the first ones are the obvious ones, the ones you would imagine and I want to describe them as just being trivial on small k. They give you zero on small k. These ones are in a natural bijection with close points of the curve. So these are the natural ones, the ones you would think about because this makes sense in global fields of positive characteristic. You know that's all there is. But, and here start the differences, you have other relations which you don't over a finite field. You can have your V to be non-trivial in K. Of course, I mean, this guy is already a valued field. So you can just extend that as you wish to this one and get new valuations on big K. And uh, yeah, these ones make no sense over finite fields because there are no non-trivial valuations on a finite field. So uh, here you want some geometrical object so that you can apply some algebraic geometry to this. So let me try to 
make a drawing now to explain somehow, how do you get a geometrical object associated to this? It's quite simple actually. So um, consider uh, the ring R, which is just um, Taylor series, the discrete valuation ring whose fraction field is our small k. And you can fix a model, curly C. Uh, so curly C would be over R of our curve C over small k. Okay, so making a picture here, so this is our curve, our nice curve C, and it leaves over, a, I'm going to draw it as a big fat point here, small k. Let me change colors now. Um, yeah, blue should be all right now maybe red. Uh, so now there's a small point here, that's C, and uh, I'm going to join blue. So this whole thing is just R, that's the spec of R, just two points. And uh, yeah, over C, you will have something. I mean, if you fix a model, you will get stuff here, like some weird things, and maybe a triple intersection over there, like it could be really ugly. And uh, yeah, of course, this, um, this thing right here would be your uh, curly C, okay? And uh, yeah, I'm going to give a name to this, uh, to this, uh, to this component here, that's the closed fiber of this model. I'll just call it C0, okay? So uh, that's just any model, but uh, I'm going to make some assumptions. So let me start by saying that you may assume, and of course the, the keyword here is just singularization, you may assume that uh, your C0 is nice enough. So C0 is a um, strict normal crossings divisor, okay? You, of course, we're in characteristic zero here. So we get access to Hironaka's uh, theorem. We can desingularize the whole C uh, curly C and get this C0 to be really nice. Okay, so you can avoid these auto intersections and these trivial intersections over there. And you get a nicer model. This will be really important to actually get uh, good arithmetic behavior later, okay? I'm not going to get into those details, but it's important to assume that so that you get the good arithmetic behavior. So this is work that has been done by other people already. So, uh, and then once you get that, well, the irreducible uh, components, so these nice curves over here uh, of uh, C0, well, they are divisors, of course. It's a strict normal crossing divisor. So, and you know that divisors in a scheme, they just give you valuations. So that gives you valuations in K. And those are your new kind of valuations, okay? So now uh, I'm going to call omega zero uh, the set of, uh, well, this big set, the valuations that coming from uh, C0 plus the classical ones. Oh, I'm sorry, I actually forgot to give you definition here. So when I said the classical ones, the trivial, the ones that are trivial on K, the closed points of the curve, these ones, I'm going to call them omega, okay? By analogy with the classical K. So omega is the classical set of places, the ones you would think about, and omega zero will be a bigger set. It has omega inside, and there are some new valuations, okay? So uh, that's more or less the drawing. Let me just remark here that everything that I'm going to tell you right now, it's true for this field, but there's a second kind of field. I don't wanna do drawings for that one because it would be too long, but uh, another geometric uh, global field I'm going to be interested in uh, is the following, you get a uh, C double parenthesis X, Y. So this is just a fraction field, of course, of Taylor series in two variables. So double bracket X, Y, okay? Uh, so how would you get that? Well, you take alpha in space, you localize at zero, zero at the origin, and then you complete. That's, that's your local ring right there, two dimensional local ring. It has a lot of one dimensional points that will give you evaluations. Those would be the classic ones. And uh, yeah, so that's how you get the classic ones and you get some more with uh, more complicated constructions. Uh, of course, that field and finite extensions. The point is that finite extensions of this uh, behave just as well. Uh, finite extensions. 
Uh, okay, so the point is that it also has usual, in some sense, valuations that I'm going to call omega and new valuations in some sense that will take me to omega zero, a bigger set of places. So everything that I'm going to say from now on, it's true for both kinds of fields with the same notations, omega and omega zero, okay? Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're new to these things, you can just think of the first example I gave that's already interesting enough. So uh, before I get into the results themselves, let me state some known properties. So the known arithmetic, arithmetic properties for these fields. So- The valuations are always discrete variations. Yeah, yeah, of course. Discrete valuations of rank one, yeah. They are associated to divisors in the end. That's the point. They are associated to a divisor in some geometric model. So yes. Yeah, thanks. And we're always considering completions with respect to these valuations. So uh, in that sense, we're doing the analogy with number fields. Okay. Uh, so um, let us, well, I want to talk about local global principles and Brouwer Manning abstractions. So I need the Brouwer group. I need to define the Brouwer Manning abstraction. So I need something like the Brouwer uh, Hasse Nether theorem. No, sorry, missing an S. Hasse. Nether. So what do we know in this sense? Okay. What about this? Well, there are some good news. You can always, of course, send Brouwer K into the direct sum of the Brouwer KDs, right? Here I'm taking the sum in omega, the classical set of places. And here you get your local classical theory. So you can, you get some invariant uh, here that goes to uh, Q mod Z and actually the bar group of these guys is isomorphic to Q mod Z and you don't have to care about Archimedean places. So they are all Q mod Z. You get a zero here then. And actually this is a complex and it's exact. So that's really good news. You can, you do get a really nice reciprocity law that tells you how to understand the classes in the global field by means of the local ones. However, problem, there's a kernel. So there's a kernel right here. I wanna give it a name. I'm just going to tell you that it's a divisible group. Actually, it's a direct sum of Q mod Z, some copies of Q mod Z, finitely many ones. They are controlled by the combinatorics of, of uh, this joint right here, of C0. But that is, as long as C0 is nice enough, this is where you need that uh, C0 to be a strict normal crossing supervisor. Okay, for our purposes, I just need to know that it's a divisible group. Okay, so I don't want to do on to that. So, okay, we lost injectivity, that's a problem. However, however, the good news is you can also get, if you really need that injectivity, you really want to understand your Brouwer classes by means of local classes, well, you can always take the direct sum in omega zero, that's a bigger set, and here you get injectivity. The problem is that here you lose Q mod Z, you get some direct sum of Q mod Zs. Yeah, I don't know what I put that symbol, sorry. It's the direct sum symbol. And yeah, you get stuff on the right. You can actually understand it much better, but the point is you can more or less get your Brouwer Hassan method sequence to work. In particular, the, the obvious remark that I must write here is that you can define a Brouwer Manning obstruction. That's the good news, okay, to a local global principle. Why? Well, you just do the exact same diagram. You only need this part right here to be a complex in order to define the Brouwer-Manning obstruction. So that's good news. Of course, this is with respect to omega, okay? You cannot define a Brouwer-Manning obstruction with respect to omega zero a priori, unless you start considering weirder groups like this. And I don't want to do that. So that's for Brouwer has an ether. There's a second classical result uh, in number theory that you want to extend to this context because it's really important in the arithmetic of homogeneous spaces. That is Poitou Tate duality. Okay, so what about this one? Well, let me define some notation first. So um, if you have M a Gawa module. Uh, then uh, you want to define these uh, tate shafarevich groups, so sha i of k with values in m, which is, of course, uh, sorry, it's the kernel of 
the map that goes from the ith cohomology group to the product of the ith cohomology groups in the local case. Okay, of course, here I must be precise. I must say again, it's omega. It's the small classical set of places. If I ever want to consider the bigger set, then this will be smaller, of course, and I'm going to give it a new definition of so I zero when I have, whenever I consider omega zero right here. So sha i zero, of course, it's always a subset of a subgroup of sha i, right? So now uh, that's the definition and quantitative duality has to do with these groups. So uh, the classical statement is for, I'm just going to state it for T a K torus. Of course, you probably know that it's more general than that, but uh, I will only care about torus here. So there are perfect pairings of finite groups. This is part of the statement. Uh, so uh, two pairings. So the first one would be SHA1 KT with uh, SHA2 KT uh, hat. And I think I don't have to explain in this seminar what T hat is, but let me just remind it uh, just in case. This is the set of the group of geometric characters of T seen as a Galois module naturally. Okay, so it's HOM from T to GM. Uh, and this goes to uh, Q mod Z. And uh, I know I'm, uh, if anybody wants to stop me, I'm lying right now, of course, but let me just try to write the second one. Uh, I'll tell you immediately why I'm lying. So the second one is just the inverse one. Two of uh, K, uh, T, and you also fall into Q mod Z and it's a perfect pairing. Okay, so this is the classical statement. If K were a number field, then we're good. This is the statement. But here, things don't work. Okay, so there's a problem. So I have to put a big bar right there and a big bar right here. So the SHA2 behave badly. So I have to put a bar there to control them. And what's the meaning of this bar? Well, you take the group A and you just mod out the maximal divisible subgroup. Okay, so that's the definition of the bar. There's, these SHA2s can have divisible elements and you don't want to look at them when you do the Poitouté duality. So uh, yeah, you mod them out and then you get a nice perfect, perfect pairing between SHA2 mod divisibles with SHA1 in both senses, okay? So as a remark, and to make the link with the, 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 the property we saw before, Brouwer has another. Well, this is already telling you. I mean, recall that the Brouwer group is just H2 of GM, GM is a torus. So we're right here, H2 of GM. We're considering the kernel of Brouwer K going to Brouwer KV. So and we learned that this thing is maybe non-trivial. On the other hand, you got here your SHA1 of KZ. Z is the dual of, of GN. So uh, this one is trivial. H1 of KZ is already trivial. So this one must be trivial. And hence, we learn here that this group right here must be divisible, which is what I told you before. So uh, yeah, that's another way of saying that SHA2 K GN can be uh, non trivial, but the good news is that SHA2 0 K GN behaves well. This one is always zero. Okay, so that's already good news. Problem you do not have a Poitouté duality theorem for these guys. That fails completely. So there's nothing you can do right there. So, uh, yeah, so you got good things and you got bad things. And finally, the last property I want to mention, it's really not, I'm not going to use it, but I do like to mention it because everywhere we encounter a problem, it finally boils down to this problem. There is no analog in this context, no analog whatsoever to Chibotarev's density theorem. theorem. Okay, so this has consequences in the world of Galois homology because what you do have is that you can have cyclic extensions of these fields, of the global fields, that are locally trivial everywhere and not just in omega, but in omega zero. Really, really everywhere. And this translates into the non triviality of some Galois cohomology group. Actually, you get that your SHA1 of Q mod Z, it's non trivial. And in terms of something that makes sense here, SHA1 Q mod Z is just isomorphic naturally to SHA2 KZ. This guy can be non-zero. 
Okay, well, can be, just put it that way, it depends on the field, of course, can be non-trivial. And even, as I said, even SHA-2-0 KZ can be non-zero. So this is really, really bad news, okay? By the way, of course, if this guy is zero, you go back to potutate here, SHA-2 KZ is right here. The, on the other side, you get SHA-1 KGM. Hilbert 9 is telling you that this guy is trivial. So this guy with the bar must be trivial. So this guy must, must be divisible, okay? That's something you learn as well. But hey, it's divisible, so it's huge when it's non-trivial. It's huge. You get tons of non-trivial extensions that are locally trivial everywhere. It's just, it's just really bad news. Anyway, uh, so that's what we know about this field. So of course, these properties were proved by lots of people. I don't have the time to cite every, uh, everyone. But in the particular case of the field I presented, you can find lots of these results in an article by Kodiotolen and Harari. Uh, I think it's Crowley as well. Maybe Kodiotolen can correct me. Um, anyway, last part of this talk, how are we with time? Oh yeah, we're good. Uh, so third and last part. So let us now talk about local global principles for homogeneous spaces. Once again, okay, so that's the last part, but of course here with K as above. Okay, so now K will be the function field of a curve over C double parenthesis T, or if you prefer this new field that I mentioned in, uh, by the way, that is finite extensions of C double parenthesis X and Y, okay? So we'll try to deal with this. Okay, so you see the milestones that I presented for number fields. Well, if you're gonna start working with these uh, new fields, you might wanna follow uh, the steps of the ones that were there before. So you try with step one, which was um, principal homogeneous spaces. So we're gonna follow Sansuk. So this is already done. This is stuff, it's not my work with uh, Diego. Uh, it's uh, outside immediately who did this. So you fix uh, G or connected linear K group, okay? And okay, so let us start recalling the basic stuff of, of what Sansuk did. So first of all, you know that um, principal homogeneous spaces of G, well, once again, I think in this seminar, everybody knows this. They are in natural bijection with the Galois cohomology set H1KG. That's true for any field. Uh, and of course then, uh, if you get principal homogeneous spaces of G, with uh, local points uh, for every V in omega, well, this is just torsors. So classes in here that are trivial are the, just a group locally everywhere. So this is just SHA-1 kg. Note that I put omega here, so I put a SHA-1 here. Okay, if I put omega zero, I should put SHA-1 zero. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, so let us, for, for, for a second, let us concentrate on the abelian case so that these guys are well behaved. Uh, so if X is a um, principal homogeneous space under some abelian connected G, uh, well then, and this is a very, a very nice uh, property of these guys, this is just a geometric fact. It has nothing to do with number fields or any field whatsoever. This Cyrillic B I presented you at the, uh, in the first part actually turns out to be isomorphic to SHA2 K G hat. Okay, and here G hat once again, yeah, it's a, it's a model of character. So if you get a torus, if G is a torus, so an abelian connected G usually is a torus or a unipotent thing, uh, well, you just get, uh, the tate shafarovich group of its um, a character of, um, module of characters, okay? So uh, you look at this, SHA2 KG hat and SHA1 KG. Hey, what to tate? <laughs> so there must be some connection, right? And indeed there is, this is the work of Sonsig. What Sonsig did was technically uh, showing that what to tate, of course, I'm hiding a lot behind this uh, arrow right there. Um, 
potentate corresponds. There's a huge commutativity to show right there to the Brouwer Mannion obstruction with respect to this serialic B. And that's good news. Now you can actually deal with potentate duality and use it to explain the Brouwer Mannion obstruction. So uh, this is in the abelian case, of course. And here I put a bit, I'm being sarcastic, of course, a bit more work. And the keyword here is abelianization techniques that were hugely developed by Borrow in the 90s. Uh, so these will give you essentially the same conclusion uh, for uh, a uh, general linear G. So of course there's a lot to be done. I mean, with some group, you can control using Poitot duality, the uh, brouwer manner obstruction for linear G and principal homogeneous spaces of such a linear G, okay? There's a lot that's hidden right there, but this is the path you must follow, okay? So if you understand well Poitot duality, you're good to go to understand brouwer manner obstruction in this new context. That's the main hint that I wanna tell you. So, Using these techniques, you get to the uh, following theorem, uh, which was done by uh, Colotelen and uh, Harari, oh, sorry, and uh, Harari on one side and by Izquierdo on the other side. Remember, there are two types of field here. So this is um, function fields of curves over serial variety of this T, and this is uh, fields of finite extensions of C double parentheses X and Y. But it's the same theorem. So you take G a connected linear K group, right? And uh, X a uh, principal homogeneous space of G. Uh, then you got what you want, okay? Then the Brouwer Mannion obstruction associated to this Cyrillic B is the only obstruction to local global precedence. In other words, if this set right here is non empty, then this set of rational points is non-empty, okay? Uh, so that's how you prove step one. Great. Uh, a nice remark that I must make here is um, the following. Note that here, the italic points we're considering are uh, with respect to omega, once again, not omega zero. So one may ask, uh, well, why do you care about omega zero then? I mean, why bother if you can explain everything with just omega? Well, once again, the, the, the fact that Brouwer has an ether fails may give you a hint. So uh, let's go one step forward and ask, what about connected? So let's, let's try to follow Borovoy now and try to do connected stabilizers. And here we found surprises, okay? So this is our work with Diego. And uh, let me just state the theorem right out, the one that I want to talk about. So this is a theorem with Izquierdo and myself. Of course, it appeared two weeks ago in the archive. So um, there exist uh, homogeneous spaces of very nice group, SLM, so G is SLM, with very nice stabilizers, just tori, toric stabilizers, uh, such that. Okay, so let me put, um, yeah, first of all, no rational points, of course. <laughs> That's what you want, I want counter examples. Um, then, what about the Brouwer Manor obstruction? Well, you got your points orthogonal to the whole Brouwer group, not just. Cyrillic B, okay? The whole bar group. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I made a mistake here. Of course, you want your set of rational points to be empty. You don't want rational points. You do want a delic point or final to the Brouwer of X. Once again, careful, this is with respect to omega. So what about omega zero? Yeah, one could argue, for instance, if I manage to create a torus, a homogeneous space that has points locally everywhere in omega, but it doesn't have a point in some place outside omega, you're good to go. That's, that's already a counterexample, and it's quite easy for you to imagine one. 
Already this result right here is telling you that you cannot imagine those in the world of torsors, but here you can actually build them up with, mm, with a little bit of work, but things are even worse. Even if you add the hypothesis of having points locally everywhere, so for every V in omega zero, well, you still don't get a local global principle. So really, really bad news. And actually it can change this omega zero for the whole set of all places, all completions, and it's still wrong. Okay, so it's really, really bad news somehow. And it's a consequence of what I've been telling you before. So, um, okay, how are we with time? Oh, great. We're right on time. Uh, okay, so let me describe you, first of all, the key uh, ingredient of uh, this uh, construction we did. So, um, okay, take X, um, a homogeneous space of SLN with uh, a billion stabilizer, okay? Of course, I will specify to Tori, but this works for abelian stabilizers in general. So there's a host construction by Springer. This, this uh, goes uh, way back to the 60s. Uh, that tells you that uh, you can construct, first of all, uh, S, a K form of a given stabilizer, okay? Mind you, um, so you got, a, you got a homogeneous space that has no rational points. So in order to get a stabilizer, you need to fix a geometric point. So you will get a torus or an abelian group, whatever, over K bar. You don't necessarily get a K group. Well, with this work of Springer, you can actually define a K form naturally if it's abelian. That's why I want to put abelian. Otherwise I don't get a K, a K form. I get more uh, weirder stuff. Uh, and a second thing you get, and this is the nice one, this is the key ingredient, you get a class eta x in the second cohomology group of this s right here. This is the so-called uh, Springer class. And the funny thing of this Springer class in this particular setting where the ambient group is SLN is the following. This is the really, really nice property. Your homogeneous space will have L points if and only if this class restricted to L is trivial in H2LS. This is true for any L, okay? For any uh, field over K. So uh, what you immediately get is that um, failures of the local global principle lie, they are hidden in, uh, well, in SHA 2KS, right? Because you want a class in H2, Ks that is trivial locally everywhere. Okay, I'm actually in SHA two zero. If I want to add the third condition right here. Okay, so that's one thing. This is the key ingredient. Moreover, moreover, a second important fact. Sorry. Moreover, um, for such x, so same x as above, as a land with abelian stabilizers, you can actually prove that your cyrillic B right here. Uh, it's isomorphic, and this is a very nice fact again, to SHA1 K S hat. So <laughs> once again, you get your SHA2 now, before it was SHA1, huh? let, me, let me remind you here. We were, we were our country examples were lie in SHA1 and the broad group is SHA2. And magically right now, our country examples lie in some SHA2 and the broad group is SHA1. So hey, what to take, right? And indeed, indeed, of course, with a lot of work, once again, you get that Poitou-Tate duality corresponds uh, to uh, the Brouwer-Manning obstruction. Uh, of course, with respect to this Cyrillic B, yeah, so you gotta be careful. I said that we can prove stuff for the whole Brouwer group, but actually it turns out that in the example we made up, Cyrillic B is the whole Brouwer group. That's, that's the explanation actually. Um, so yeah, so now you understand everything, but the thing is that everything turned around. Before our country examples live in SHA-1, let me go back a little bit more to Pachutate right here. SHA-1 is well behaved. The guy that behaves badly with Pachutate duality is SHA-2. So now that we get our country examples live in SHA-2, you would expect a bad behavior. 
And this is exactly what it happens. We will manage to make the class to fall in the divisible part. Plot table will not see it. And then the bar minus obstruction will not see it. That's the point of the construction, okay? So I gave you the key ingredient. Let me give you the recipe now, if you want to cook up your own country example. Uh, so first of all, find, and this is non-trivial stuff, of course, find the torus S with uh, SHA to zero uh, K as non-trivial, okay? Uh, so uh, this, thank God, had been done before by other people. So this is Coliotelen, Coliotelen, um, Parimala, and Suresh, and an article in Transactions of the AMS in, six, in 2016. They had already found such counterexamples. So we started from there, right? And of course, uh, you will fix a, a non-trivial alpha in there, okay? First things first. Now, okay, you got your class, but now you want a homogeneous space. So there's a, a lot of work to do as well. You need to construct a uh, homogeneous space, uh, X, of course, with, sorry, with a Springer class alpha. Okay, and this, once again, thank God somebody did it before. This time is uh, the article I mentioned before by Demarche and myself in uh, 19. Um, so yeah, here we actually uh, did a whole construction. Uh, we, we, we proved the sort of equivalence of categories between uh, these classes that are actually gerbs, if you know what that means and uh, jars with some given morphisms and the category of homogeneous spaces. So essentially, once you give yourself a class in here, and once you fix G to be SLN, which is a really, really nice group, you immediately get a homogeneous space of SLN with Springer class alpha and toric stabilizers if S was a torus. Okay, so uh, great. So the, the tools were there already available for us. And uh, so this already ensures uh, X satisfies immediately uh, one and three because you have uh, a non-trivial class for every local uh, field in omega zero and you got your non-trivial class for K. So it has, let me, let me go back to the, the list. You have no rational points and you have local points everywhere. So now the only thing we have to do is deal with the Brouwer manner instruction, okay? And this is the hardest part, actually. This is the hardest part. So to get number two, so orthogonal to the Brouwer group, you wanna make sure, make sure that alpha lies, well, alpha it's already in SHA2 zero KS, right? And this is a subgroup of SHA2 KS, right? And SHA2 KS has a big, fat divisible subgroup a priori inside. I mean, if your K is well chosen, of course, and your torus is well chosen. So you wanna make sure that uh, your alpha is divisible in SHA2 K S. It will not be divisible here, huh? This, this guy is finite, you can prove that. But this finite subgroup of this one here, it might happen that this alpha can become a divisible element. And that was the hard part, just finding the right K, the right S and the right alpha so that you get a class that is SHA2 zero and is divisible in SHA2, okay? This will imply, as I said before, that Potutate does just not see it, okay? Because it will be divisible. So it will be modded out in the duality. Uh, hence, uh, neither does uh, Brouwer Manning, and uh, that's it. So you are orthogonal to the Brouwer. That's a quick way of putting it, of course. But uh, then again, there's a lot of work, uh, technically it is hidden right here, but that's one. Once you get something orthogonal uh, with respect to the Potter duality, you are good to go. Uh, so uh, once again, this is very hard and it builds, um, so it uses 
once again, the constructions by Coleotel and Parimala and Suresh. So, uh, and actually these, uh, they were present in that paper, but the computations, the original computations were an article by Coleotel uh, himself alone in, um, in the Journal de Théorie de Nombre de Bordeaux, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so what did he do in that paper? Well, he actually explicitly computed Brouwer groups Sorry, Brower groups of. Uh... Oh, but uh, I mean, the counterexample is definitely in this joint paper. Sure, sure. The counterexample is there. But at some point, uh, uh, let me remind you that I said this is with respect to um, Cyrillic B. At some point, we need to prove that Cyrillic B was a whole Brower group. And there, we really, really need the explicit computations of the Brower group. So that's the point. You actually, you get the explicit non-trivial class in the Brouwer group, which is the non-trivial class. You can prove that the unramified Brouwer group is Z mod two, and then prove that that is the only non-trivial class in the whole thing. You got no geometric Brouwer group, the algebraic Brouwer group. We weren't able to prove that it's Z mod two, but at some point we managed to prove that it has at most two elements and we get a non-trivial class, so we're good to go. And that's it, that's how we prove the thing. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, uh, we, you need both sides of the story. You need the counterexamples and the constructions of the fields in uh, the article by Coleotel and Parimala Suresh, and you need the exclusive computations in the article by Coleotel alone. So uh, yeah, what was I writing? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, that's just ending the phrase. Okay, so it uses these exclusive computations. And of course, the counterexample itself that comes, like, like I told you right here. Uh, okay, I think we're on time. So let me just write down one last remark because this is probably a question that one might ask immediately. Okay, okay, so you got a counterexample. Can you explain it? So yeah, the answer is yes, okay. There are more powerful obstructions. Uh, that explain not only these counterexamples that explain every uh, failure of the local global principle, once again, in the, in the context we were, uh, we were dealing with, uh, so connected stabilizers, okay? Uh, every failure of LDP for uh, homogeneous spaces of uh, linear connected K groups with connected, and this one I'm going to write it completely, connected stabilizers. So technically, if we follow once again the main milestones, we're done with step two. So um, just to tell you quickly what they are, the first one, there are, there are two of them. So the first one is Robert Manner instruction, uh, but with respect to uh, some torsos, you build torsos over your variety under quasi trivial tori. This is quite uh, surprising somehow. So over uh, over x, uh, because positive trivial tori operators don't give you any information. I mean, a torsor under positive trivial torus, uh, rationally it's trivial. Uh, so, so you're just dealing with a stably k by rational variety, sorry, a variety that's stably k by rational to yours. However, they do explain stuff. So you got some really weird behavior going on here. And uh, last uh, thing, you can also explain this with descent obstructions. With respect to uh, just uh, torsors under tori. So another thing you got here that descent obstruction is stronger than the Brouwer manner obstruction. That's a new phenomenon that you don't get in number fields. It is well known that descent with respect to connected groups is equivalent to the algebraic Brouwer manner obstruction. Here, uh, descent obstruction is stronger. So it might happen that in some other geometric context, uh, descent obstruction will explain more stuff. So with Diego, we're right now wondering whether on surfaces, which is a well-studied subject classically, descent obstruction will explain more things than Brouwer manner obstruction in this new context. So there's a whole bunch of open questions right now. So this is really interesting. And I think I'm running time, so thank you very much. Okay, so we can you can clap if you want. <laughs> uh, okay, so thank you for, for the talk. Uh,
questions or comments, you can use the chat if you want. Okay, and then I can repeat the question. No question? No, no, I have some questions. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let me appear on the screen. Um, so, the, the, in fact, your last point about the baron instruction and the quasi triatori I think we, you're, the point is you're always studying the adelic points, not the, the not the points of the compactif not the adelic points of the compactification. Mm. So of course, if we were just studying the adelic points of compactification, you wouldn't expect anything. But for for an open variety like this, I don't know whether there's an equivalence between uh, between Brahmanin and and, and descent and the torsos, even uh, quasi trial tori, even in the classical case. Yeah. That is true indeed. Um, in fact, while listening to the being of your talk, I was wondering I, <laughs> something very stupid. If you take X, which is an open variety, you take a, a compactification. Now you have a map from the set of adelic points of the, of the open variety to the adelic points of the compactification. And then you have a map to the, the, the Brahmanian set of the, of the adelic points of, of the first one to the, to the Brahmanian set of the second one, right? And do we know an example where um, the set of adelic points of the compactification orthogonal to the bra group of the compactification is 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 is, um, is empty? Sorry, it's not empty, but the first one, the set of adelic points of the of the open variety orthogonal to the bra group of X, which is bigger, is empty. You mean over number fields or in this particular? No, number, even over number field. Yeah, I was. I mean, maybe I know, but I right now. <laughs> Is well, uh, the, the, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the whole difference between the two fields is precisely that uh, when you talk about compactifications, you're dealing with the unramified bar group. So yeah, when yeah, you go yeah. to the open Absolutely. set, uh, yes. you're dealing with ramified classes. Hence, you can apply stuff like Harari's formal lemma and yeah, start moving uh, things away. So, uh, and you don't have that here because you don't have Chibotaret. So no, I, that I, that I, no, no, that I realize, yeah. But still, uh, so I mean, still, I, I think, I think your, for instance, it, here, when you have your, your, B, your Russian B, in, in the classical case of a number fields, the Russian B actually consists of classes of the bra group, which extends to the smooth compactification. Well, I think here it doesn't. Uh, well, in this particular example, the only one we got- yeah, in, this, in your example, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does, it does that's the point. I, I have no idea if we can construct one that where actually comes from outside. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. That's a, that's a really good question. But already finding counterexamples, I mean, once you see the recipe, you see that you need these kind of things. And uh, yeah, already finding them is really difficult, really, really difficult. Oh, that's, so, that's, uh, a, that's a difficult point, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the machinery works. It's just abstract mm -hmm. nonsense at some point. Uh, but you really need to work this out. And this is really complicated. By the way, speaking of, speaking of this, at some point, you said that uh, if you look at the compactifications corresponding to the, uh, to the completions corresponding to the points of the, of the joint fiber, uh, the, you might have counterexamples, but, but actually you, you you said it because when you said that bra of k goes to product of bra of k v for v in uh, in the um, corresponding to the joint point it need not be injective. Well, you produce a severe bra variety which which uh, which has points in all these completions, and exactly. so it's a homogeneous space. So you have a homogeneous space of yeah. an obvious one in that case. Yeah, yeah that's one that's one. Yeah, yeah, you can construct easily homogeneous space that are counterexamples with that stupid reason. That's why we added immediately. The, the the condition of having points locally everywhere really everywhere. Okay, other questions? I, I'm sorry, I still have some questions because I looked at your paper before you started. <laughs> at the end of your paper, something you didn't well, you uh, can you shift the slide a little bit up? Uh, up, sorry. Varen, uh, you, no, no, just the very end. Look at the very end. No, no, just the very end. The last two lines. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So in the paper, you explain that uh, uh, you can reduce to some torsor uh, that uh, you some torsor under quasi triad torus, and then for this for this torsor, it's enough to look at the obstruction corresponding from the B the, the Russian B of that uh, of that space. So right. my question is, is this computable? I mean, is this this, this torsor you construct is it canonical or are there several of them? <laughs> Actually, uh, Daniel Krashen asked us the same question by email, so I, I already know the answer. 
and it's yeah, I want to insist on the point that it's not canonical at all, but it is computable in theory. You mm -hmm. made tons of choices in the construction, but you can construct it in theory. So um, being more precise. So this construction right here, yeah, um, it comes from a yeah, certain equivalence of categories are is really, really abstract, but it can be turned into a, a precise construction. Then again, in order to, um, so what do you need? First of all, you need the positive trivial torus. How do you do that? Well, you just pick your torus S and you plug it into one quasi trivial torus. Yeah. That can always be done in a computable yeah. way, yeah. right? So you get your quasi trivial torus. Now that you got that, um, some theoretical results will tell you that the Springer class, when you push it, will be trivial over there. You don't mm -hmm. need to compute that, it will be true. No, no, but this and is then, clear. This is clear right? that thing because, because that was my question. You, your, your H2 class, this alpha, correspond to a group extension, right? I mean, no, you, you, yeah. you cannot use that uh, to, to say. Uh, the, the problem is that, um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, well, a priori is non trivial in the sense that uh, you, you're using Brouwer has an ether. I mean, it's, it's a quasi trivial torus. So in the end, you're looking at some Brouwer room. So in order to prove that it's trivial, you, you need the triviality of SHA to zero of GN. So you no, 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 because you, 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 you are, you are oh, okay, okay, well. I really think you do. I don't think it could be that, uh, well, maybe it doesn't, but in any, in any case, you do get that. Okay. Once you get your trivial class there, you can construct the homogeneous space. And this, I mean, if you, if you want the, the details of the uh, like uh, uh, hands-on construction, you should look at, uh, at the article by Borovo in, in 96 in Krell, because he actually did this, the same thing. You do construct it over K bar, and you transform this two cohomology class into some Galois decent data. And you descend and you define your homogeneous space explicitly. The point is that for him, this SHA2 was immediately trivial by Brouwer has an effort. That's the point. Uh, so yeah, you can construct the, the big homogeneous space explicitly with this Galois decent datum that is probably horrible to compute, but anyway, it's explicit. Mm -hmm. You gotta choose your torus, you gotta choose your Galois decent because there are co-cycles going on and co-cycles mm -hmm. mean choices. You got a class, you gotta choose a co-cycle. Uh, so there's tons of choices to be made, but once you made them, you get your homogeneous space and on the bigger homogeneous space, things are computable because serially B mod the divisible classes, it's finite. So, but, but, um, so you say you, you get your, your, um, your, your torsor, but you might get, I mean, just looking at one is enough. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so one you can construct. Two choices, but you just you construct one also like this, and then you construct your abstraction with respect to yeah. Syriac B for that one, and that's enough. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we do have a precise statement like that, but we wanted to give also the more theoretical statement that tells you, like, yeah, abstraction with respect to all quasi trivial Tori no, no, but, no, no, because but, it looks better. But yeah, we do have the precise statement telling you you can construct one, and this mm -hmm. one explains everything. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's striking with respect to the classical case, where the classical case, you construct these various universal tosses, and then you have uh, finitely many of them, but you have to look at each of them. Whereas in mm -hmm. this case, you just look at one in your, in your setup. Yeah, you see, I guess it's- Use the existence, the study of rational points on, on the bottom to, to the, the rational points on, on, the, on some, some tosser, but just one, you just have to look at one. Whereas for number fields, when you do this kind of uh, constructions, you, you have several torses and a tori, and for each of them, you have to decide whether you have to look, inspect each of them. I want to guess the following. This is just a guess. It's just intuition. But uh, the point is that you are hiding these lots of torsors on the classes of Cyrillic B of the big one, because that will give you torsors over that one. So now you have a tower of torsors, and there's precisely a result in our appendix that will tell you that that tower of torsors is a torsor. Uh -huh. okay. so, so maybe the universal torsos are here and there. Okay. I don't know. I'm just okay. speculating. But, uh... Okay, thank you. So, other questions, other people? <laughs> no, no chat, no. Well, okay, so. Okay, so we, 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 we stop for today. So there is a talk next week, uh, same time.